What is code? Before we can answer that, we should answer an easier question. What's a computer? A computer is a clock with benefits. They all work the same, doing second grade math one step at a time. Tick, take a signal and put it in box one. Tick, take another signal, put it in box two. Tick, combine the signals in box one and maybe add them together as subtract. You, using a pen and paper, can do anything a computer could do. You just can't do those things billions of times per second. That speed makes it possible to pull multiple sleights of hand all at once. Card tricks on top of card tricks. Code is a means of harnessing the computer's power, setting up all those card tricks. It all starts with words and characters entered into a computer by a human using a keyboard. They're writing in a programming language. A programming language is really just a set of rules. It tells you which words you can use to tell the computer what you need it to do. Take a look at this code. It's in JavaScript. It's a very common language that turns the web page from a document that looks like nonsense into software. Many web pages, Amazon for instance, are packed with software code like this. There's code all through here, code that makes the page into something dynamic. Now, JavaScript is just one of thousands of languages that ultimately all do the same thing. They make the computer go. So why does it matter which you choose? For the same reason that you don't take a bicycle to buy a fridge or get a physical from a neurosurgeon. Some languages just match up better with certain problems. C++ is something you might use if you were building a game for the PlayStation or Xbox. PHP is code for creating millions of web pages. They use it at Etsy and Facebook. Python's a great general purpose language. It's used by Instagram and a lot of scientists. So we know a computer is a clock with benefits and we know you can use a programming language to make software. But how's that actually happen? Well, the computer takes the programming code and reads through it character by character, tosses out all the spaces, tabs, comments, and other stuff. It leaves behind what a computer scientist might call tokens. Once it has tokens, the computer does the digital equivalent of furrowing its brow, and it reorganizes things as necessary in a process known as compilation, making the code more and more primitive until finally it's translated into a set of digital grunts called machine language. That's the sort of thing a computer can execute. And those grunts have become just part of the furniture of your life. It's software that switches channels on your TV, how you can get money out of an ATM. It's how an elevator takes you up five flights of stairs. You write code and the computer turns it into software and that can run as many times as you need. Omnipresent, familiar, invisible, that is the story of code.